Package development in Sublime Text is all about creating the package resources we need in order to get Sublime to look, act, and behave the way that we'd like it to. There are a variety of package resources at our disposal to make that happen, and throughout this video course, we're going to be covering all of them. But here in the beginning, Plugin 101, we're going to be covering the Mighty Plugin. So let's jump in with some information on what makes a plugin a plugin and what these things can do for us. Hello, fellow Sublime Text fanatics. Odan Nerd here. Welcome back to Plugin 101, where we're starting our deep dive into plugins in Sublime Text. What they are, how they tick, how they work, how to create these things. Now, remember, when we're talking about package development in Sublime Text, we're really talking about creating some collection of package resources, files of a specific type that Sublime knows how to read and interpret to modify its behavior. Plugins are just an example of a resource type that we can add to change the behavior of Sublime. Now, unlike some other package resources, resource types, we're very much more freeform in plugins than we are in other things. Uh, for example, color schemes and themes allow us to change the visual look of Sublime. Syntaxes allow us to uh, provide support for new programming languages. Those are things that extend the behavior of Sublime, but there are very specific strict guidelines for what themes can and cannot do. You can't add whole new panels to the interface. You can only style what's there and things of that nature. When it comes to plugins, however, we have much more free reign because we're actually writing code. And that allows us to do things in plugins that the it doesn't that Sublime doesn't do out of the box, and perhaps even things that the authors of Sublime never even conceived of it doing when they were first creating it. For example, my good friend Keith Hall and I are currently working on a package for Sublime Text that turns it into a MIDI piano. We can play back MIDI and you can click into the piano at the top and have it play notes uh, out of your speakers. And that's really not something that the authors of Sublime probably thought uh, was possible. So when it comes to writing plugins, what we're actually doing is interfacing new code with Sublime Text to modify its behavior. And we do that by writing Python code. Now, if you're already a Python developer, you're a step up on everybody because you already know how Python works. If you're a developer but you don't use Python, you'll find that the syntax that you need to use in Python is going to be very easy to pick up and you can take your existing knowledge of programming and apply it. And if you're not a software developer yet, don't panic. Python is an extremely easy language to learn. There's a lot of resources out there that will teach you how to write Python code. And and even so, just looking at plugin code as we're going through this course and following along, you'll probably pick up a fair bit of knowledge about Python as well. Now, with all of that said, remember, as we mentioned in a previous video, that Sublime comes prepackaged with its own integrated version of Python that it uses for its plugins. That means you don't need to install Python in order to have plugins and packages work in Sublime. And even if you have external versions of Python installed, Sublime doesn't care. It's not going to use them. It's always going to use its own integrated version of Python instead. And we can get at that version of Python by using the console, as we saw in the previous video, and entering code into the input widget and that is allowing us to talk directly to the plugin host that's running the plugin code in Sublime and we're going to cover more on that in just the next video. Now when it comes to the version of Python that we're using in plugins this is something that's dictated by the authors of Sublime. It's not something that we can swap out because it is very tightly integrated with the core of Sublime. Now here in Sublime Text 3 you can determine the version of Python that you're using by going into the console and importing the Python sys module, that's standard Python, and saying sys.version, and we can see that this is Python version 3.3.6, which is uh, very old by these standards. Now, as also mentioned in the previous video, the versions of Sublime Text that are currently in development but not publicly announced yet on the web page have the ability to have multiple different versions of Python still controlled by the authors of uh, Sublime Text. And in that case, what you get in this res in response to this will be different depending on when you're watching this video. But we're not going to touch on that here. We're going to cover that more once those builds become more readily available. Uh, but just so that we're familiar with this right now, there's a specific version of Python that we can use and that is controlled by Sublime itself. Now, when it comes to plugins, what actually is a plugin? A plugin is a Python file stored in a very specific place. The name of the file doesn't matter. All that matters is that the extension be correct so that Sublime recognizes it as a Python file and that it be in a location that Sublime knows when it sees it that it should be a plugin. And 
to get an example of that, we're going to use uh, this command here to get a new stub plugin. This is similar to what we saw in the previous video. Now this is a very simple boilerplate plugin. You can get to the same thing by using tools developer new plugin. I just happen to have added this to my command palette. Sublime sets this up as a Python file for us directly. Now when I save this, it's going to offer to put this in my user package. Now the important things I said here, remember the name doesn't matter at all. Give the plugin a name so that you know what it's supposed to be for. And other than that, it has to have an extension of .py. That's the extension of Python. So that Sublime knows that it's supposed to be a Python file. And it has to be in the root level of a package. That is, here we can see I'm in packages user. I can create the file right here, sample.py, and this will become a plugin. If I was to put this in one of these subfolders like builds, help, macros, terminus, if I put the Python file into one of those, I've created a Python file. I have not created a plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save on that. So I'm saving it in the root. The important lesson here is that every plugin is a Python file, but not every Python file is a plugin file. A plugin file is only considered to be a plugin if it's in the root of a package. And this is for very specific reasons. And that's because as Sublime authors of packages, we could be running under Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. There could be different types of code that we need to use in our package depending on what platform we're currently on. So the standard mechanisms of Python allow us to load Python code from any other part of a package that we want, even code that's inside of a folder. That's more of an advanced topic that we're going to cover down the line in a future video, but for the purposes of plugins, only in the root, and that gives us the ability to pick and choose what gets loaded as a part of our plugin. So you can, if you want to, organize the code in your package to be more nice looking as far as directory structure goes, but remember there's a, there's a cost involved in that in knowing enough about Python to know how all of that stuff works. So we're gonna cover that later on down the line. A good way to determine if what you've just done is a Python plugin or not is to check in the console because every time you create a new plugin or modify an existing plugin, Sublime will try to reload it and you'll see it saying reloading plugin and it's telling us user is the name of the package that this is in and sample is the name of the file that it is stored in. And every time that file gets changed, the, the uh, console displays something. So if you save your file and you don't see it saying it's reloading the plugin, then you have not created a plugin. You might have created a Python file not in the root of a package. You might have forgotten to include the extension. So that is important to take note of. And again, the name of this does not matter because as we can see here, the name of the command in this is example command. I've named the file sample. There can be any number of whatever you want to have inside of your plugin and it will still work. The name is purely for your own edification. Now, what exactly can plugins do? And plugin functionality falls into two broad categories, actions and reactions. Actions are deliberate actions that are instantiated by something that wants to do something like you pressing a key, you choosing a menu item, you choosing an item from the command palette, things of that nature. When you're creating key bindings, you're binding keys to commands, things that tell Sublime, do this right now. The flip side of that are reactions. This is the ability to create custom code that gets triggered in reaction to something else, like when a file is loaded, when a file is about to be saved or has just been saved, when a file is about to be closed or has just closed, things of that nature. And this allows you to put your own code in there to change the behaviors of Sublime. For example, when a file is first loaded, you could examine its content to see if there's certain information in it that you need to use in your plugin. When you're about to save a file, you could be notified so that you could reorganize the file so it looks nice on disk. You can determine when modifications are made to files, when the selection changes. There's a whole lot of that. And of course, the ideas of actions and reactions like this are something that we're going to be covering in great detail throughout the remainder of the course. Of all of the package resource types that are at our disposal as package authors, none rival the mighty plugin for its ability to modify the behavior of Sublime Text. Whether we'd like to add a new behavior by way of an explicit command or modify the behavior of Sublime by reacting to other things happening around us, plugins are the way to do that. And of course, this is a very large topic. We've only scratched the surface. There's much more to come. So if you haven't already done so, you can use the button down below to subscribe and ring the bell notification icon so you don't miss out when the new videos become available. In the next videos in the 
the series, we're going to be getting our hands dirty with some plugin development and talking about the plugin lifecycle and the plugin host and how everything fits together. So you're not going to want to miss out on that. Remember, you can always leave any questions, comments, requests for clarification, or topics that you'd like to make sure get covered in this video series down in the comment section below this video. And until the next video, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.